Hello everyone. So some days ago my boss asked me to his office. We discussed a little bit of uh, dashboards like this one for example. We discussed what has to be done and in the end he said but you know there is one more thing that I would like you to change. If I press on the date I want that this date, this filter of the date would be applied in all sheets. As you know, if you select, let's say, this year in here, let's say 2017, the filter is here and it will be applied in all the sheets. Let's go to this one. Here we can see only for, for that year, for 2007 year. Let's go to another one. Filter is still here. You can see the data. Let's remove a filter. Bam! Data will change. Let's go back to the sheet we have started. So my boss said, I would like to have that if I select the data filter, I would see that data in all the sheets. I said, okay, let's do it. I will do it. But you know, it turns out that it's not that easy to do this. And in this video, I will explain you why and what limitations ClickSense has related with calendars and sheets and filters. So let's jump in. This is a prepared sheet from my previous project. It's a test data here, so don't worry about it. It's nothing important here. But you can see here is a calendar. Years and columns. Of course, if I select any column in here, the filter will be applied in here at the top left corner, you can see it, and everything will change. And it will change in all the sheets, the other sheets. Now, the problem is that there are many tables and they have a different date. Let's look at this table below. It's also the same related with this chart. And you can see we, have, we already have a couple of columns with the dates. We have plan date, we have actual date, and in this case, yeah, only planned and the actual dates. But you know, plan date and the actual date might be different. Let's say plan date is for the end of the year, December, for example, and actual date will be for the new year, January. So it's totally different years, even two years. It can be like that as well. How can we do a filter that it would be applied if someone, someone selects a calendar and it would be applied to, to these kind of tables, charts, because it's two different dimensions, I could say. So in this case, we have to think how to avoid this and what we can do to, to do. Um, basically, this is one of the things why there are some issues with calendars in ClickSense and basically you can't do a master calendar like that. There are some things that you can do, that you can connect, but we'll go to this soon. As we can see, there are two dates and if we go to our data model viewer, we can see that we have not one, not two, not three, but a lot of tables in this window. If we zoom a little bit, you can see, for example, project. We have created, start date, finish date. Actual start date, actual finish date. Five calendars in one table. How could you possibly make one filter for five columns? Because the dates can be different. Let's take a look at the First, for example, line created 2017, start date 2018, finish date 2020. It's even three different years. So it's really hard to do that. Yep. That's the main case. What I had to explain to my boss, because if you have different columns like this, you can't do a master calendar that if you select one filter, everything would be applied. Of course, there is another thing. You can try to do uh, sheets in your dashboards 
in your ClickSense applications and use only one date for the one or another column or chart or, or sheet. Then this might be possible, but in most cases it's not really possible. Even so, if you decided, okay, I'll make a nice sheet and I will use only one date in there, well, there is still an issue. ClickSense does not have a functionality to connect all the tables by date. Let's take a look at these connections in here. We can see many tables and we can see through which columns they are connected. And none of the columns is the date column. Why? Because in database relations usually date is not used and not recommended to use as the connection option because usually it's connected by some kind of IDs or something else. For example, project ID and this goes to project ID. Let's zoom in a little bit that you would be able to see it. Yeah, project ID and we have like five tables that's, that are connected by project ID. And that's a good way to connect your database tables and your tables in ClickSense application. Because everything is connected by ID, you select a project, for example, and all the data that's related to that project, to the ID of that project, will be accessible and you can do a very nice analytics. That's why we are not able to connect by date. And ClickSense does not allow you to connect through another column, let's say, for example, project ID and the date. It just does not have such a functionality. So that's the main issue with the calendar in ClickSense. You always have, well, you always have to keep in mind that you can't make one calendar for all the data. That might be an issue if you have a sheet with two different columns and you want to filter by one or another. And like I showed you before, it's not really possible to do that because the dates might be too different to do that. However, in some cases when you want to get the data by the date, you can make a connection through the date. So, for example, in this case we have a different application which has less tables, but as you can see we have, sorry it's not in English but I'll try to explain you, in this case these tables are connected by the date field and then you can have connection made from the date. Unfortunately, in this case you will not be able to make another connection by ID or something else. If you did a connection through the date, that's all. In some cases, in some graphics, that might work. That might be okay, you can do it and that might be okay. In some cases, no. Uh, also, there is one more con about doing a connection through a date, because you know there are date entries, like one date, another date, one day, another day, maybe different time, and so on and so on. So what happens when you connect um, two columns through a very different dates, I mean very accurate dates with hours and minutes, and then you'll try to use the filter. ClickSense will select, uh, if you apply the filter, might not select all the data from one or another table on the same date, because it takes those exact entries, like, like I said, hours, days, and so on, and in two different tables, they might be different, like, let's say, let's say 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, two different tables, and if you select if you connect the tables like this and you select some other en entry which has that current timestamp, everything will be selected from both dates from that table. Let's take a look at the example. Yeah, we have this table and we have some kind of dates. Date, previous date time and some kind of status. And we have some IDs in here. So, and these tables are connected by the date. So what will happen if you select one of these IDs? On the other table, 
you will get the entries only according to the timestamp of this ID. So we have time, time we don't need, and we have a date, one date, another date. In this case, these are the same dates. So on the other table, not all entries will be showed if you select that ID. The entries will be showed only for that particular date. That's also one of the specific things like how ClickSense works. And you should keep that in mind. But for this case, we have we can have a very easy workaround. We can create a master calendar to fix this issue. I will not create it right now. I will show you how it's created. Let's go to data load editor. And here we go. We have a master calendar script in here. Everything is being taken from Microsoft SQL database. So, well, if you have a different database, it should be fine. You should be able to use the script and you should be able to, to do the same. And in here we can see that we take data from the specific timetables and then combine by the week, year, month, day, we have these different columns. It kind of fills the gaps. If there is a table and on the first table there are dates like first date, second date and third date and then the last date of the month. So if you select some entry from that date, only these dates will be applied on the other table. First, second, third and the last one. But in that other table there might be entries on 15 and 16 days. Yep, yep. Master calendars make some empty dates that let's say all months would be filled with those dates and that will fix this issue. That's quite easy workaround. But it does not fix the case that you would be able to have one calendar for all these dates. Let's go to this table for example and we can see one date in here, another date in here, third date in here, plan date, some kind of another date and one more. Three dates in one table and that's usual because you can have a date when item was created, you can have like some kind of start date, finish date, actual start date, actual finish date and so on and so on. So like I said, there can be uh, many dates in one column, in one table, sorry about that. So master calendar does not fix these kind of issues. Master calendars, master calendar only can fix those issues like I said, if you have two tables and you connected them through the connection through the date. You made a connection through the date. Yeah, that's the thing what the master calendar does. So, and in this case, for this kind of tables, well, there is no good way to, to make that everything would reflect on the date, on the date filter. Unfortunately, now in 2020, maybe later it will be updated, but for now, you will not be able to have one calendar for all the tables in ClickSense because, well, it's just too different, like too, too many dates and it's too, too hard to make one filter. Um, however, there is one more thing that you can do. Like I showed you before, uh, you can create, a, you can connect the tables through the data, through a date field, and create a master calendar that empty dates would be filled for the nice work. Uh, one more thing that you can do, uh, if you're using SQL scripts, you're taking data from a database, you can uh, use the SQL script and let's say union and connect more tables to one table. It's not recommended to do that, only in very rare and specific cases. If you really need some data to be added to, to, to one column, so using as well scripts, you can connect, like I said, but for sure, I do not recommend you to do that, only in some and rare cases. And if you make such a connection, usually for a specific project or something like that, you should not make any other many connections. Using SQL script, you can do a union all script and type the data and then connect all the tables. In this case, it will be like one huge table, but in some cases, when you want to have one calendar for a specific data from many different tables, you can do it like that. 
But if you'll do like that, please note that union all, you have to have the same columns in all tables. So for example, in here we have an empty column again. Here we have expected amount and then we have expenses planned amount, but it's in different table. So we add a zero at the beginning and we have plan date. It's everywhere, plan date, plan date, plan date. And then we have some kind of code and this code is being used in another table. That's why it's zero here. If you do such union, you have to have the same table structure in all tables. I mean, the tables itself can be different, but when you do the union connection, those tables, you have to make sure that you load up only the same amount of columns in each table. That's very important. Otherwise, it will not work. That's for sure. So, in some cases, this might be useful as well. That's about it about today's topic. I hope it was useful for you. Um, if you have any questions, please type a comment. I'll try to help you as much as I can. I'll have some experience with ClickSense, so I might be able to help you. Maybe something change, changes in the future. I, I will make another video. And for now, if you like the video, please like it, please subscribe it. If you like what I'm doing or you want to have more perks and some additional stuff, please take a look at my Patreon page because, well, support is really important for me as well. See you next time. Cheers. A little bit of water. And we can start. Record? Yes. Thank you. I think I'll have to refresh let's stop recording finito